Hi, how are you doing these days? Interesting times, weird situation. Well, Easter is coming. One more week, and you are now thinking how awkward it will be to celebrate Easter as if we were inside a cave, a hollow, or a tomb, right? And wait a minute, a tomb? You know what? Maybe celebrating Easter amid this whole situation won't be that strange anyway. Perhaps it will become something even uh, pedagogical, educational, where we take this self-isolation and social distancing thing to think deeper on what Jesus experienced in that tomb. Totally isolated, utterly distant from his loved ones, all because of you and me. Easter is coming. So Easter it is. This message is the first of two considerations on the topic of Easter and the community. In a time like this, when we can't get together, thinking of the relevance of life in a community may be the best thing we can do. When we want to read and learn from the episodes of Jesus' Passion and Resurrection, we usually go to the last chapters of the Gospels, right? Well, there's a reason for this. These chapters tell us of Jesus' last days, his suffering, his condemnation, his anguish, his death, as well as his resurrection and his commissioning of his church. However, there is an exciting exercise we can try whenever we study the Easter stories. The textual interrelation between Christ's passion and resurrection and the stories of Jesus' encounters with many, many characters and the Gospel of John is particularly rich in this regard. Take, for example, um, the story of Mary Madeline before the empty tomb, chapter 20, in relation to the earlier long narrative of the resurrection of Lazarus, chapter 11. In the first story, Mary Madeline is a clear sign of the representation of the community of believers, right? The absence of Jesus' body causes anguish, causes pain and sadness in her heart and in her mind. And it's a kind of suffering that distorts and hinders her understanding. John wanted to teach us that, as with Mary, several things overwhelm and hinder the community's belief in the risen Lord. People need to continually uh, revive their faith and rekindle hope to withstand suffering and persecution to be able to believe in the possibility of a new life. Well, let me start with Lazarus' story first. Jesus had not yet reached the village. He was still walking there, in the place where Martha had found him. When the Jews, who were at the house with Mary, Martha's sister, trying to console her, saw her get up quickly and run away who knows where, they went after her, thinking that she would go to the tomb to cry and mourn her brother's death. When she reached the place where Jesus was, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. This encounter is full of many different and intense feelings. She prostrates herself, yes, but she is not afraid to be who she is. She is not afraid to express her pain, to express her sadness at the loss of Lazarus. It is a moving scene, you see. First, all the people already moved by the death of their friend are now distraught to see Mary's sadness. On the other side is Jesus totally moved as well with compassion, recognizing the sorrow involved all around death, pain, and anguish. What a scene! The story shows the death and resurrection of a man through the constant report of illness. In the first verses of this chapter, the word disease appears five times. Its repetition shows their suffering situation. A kind of suffering that was causing not only pain but also anxiety for not allowing them to be able to hope before such a powerful enemy. Does it ring a bell? Think what we are living right now. And this community was the small village of Bethany whose name means nothing less than the house of the poor or the house of affliction. They embraced facing Jesus and are now being persecuted by radical religious authorities. 
Besides, they have also been attacked by the infamous news of the arrival and, and spread of a disease that has claimed the life of one of his dear members. The community has no alternative but to describe and declare that Lazarus' death is definitive. He has been dead for four days. Death is the end of all hopes of life, they say. And moreover, the Pharisaic belief in the resurrection of the last day makes it difficult for the community to believe in the new life promised by Jesus. I know, Lord, that he will be resurrected in the resurrection on the last day, right? Note Martha's almost ironic tone in agreeing with Jesus' words here. But isn't there a resurrection in the life of the community, we could ask ourselves. The village, there is the community, needs to revive faith, needs to uh, rekindle hope to resist the disease and death that lurked around their homes. Now, this story also shows a deep friendship and love relationship capable of generating new life among the members of that community helping them to overcome abandonment and suffering. Because this story is in the gospel not just to show God's power over death, this too, of course, but also to report a relationship of intimacy, affection, kindness, and joy between Jesus and his friends. Here we find one of the shortest verses in the Bible, which is full of incomparable significance. Edakrisen ho Jesus, that is, Jesus wept. Behind this evident reaction of the Master, so careful, so, so loving, we see the daily attitudes of any community of faith in God, the coexistent and the bonds of love that unite its member both in pain and joy. Is this perhaps already a sign of the presence of the risen Jesus in that community? This strong demonstration of love and mercy is evident in the scene in which Lazarus passes from death to life. Lazarus, come out, says Jesus. Lazarus shows up with his feet and hands bandaged, his face covered with a shroud. And Jesus says to the community, let him go, let him walk. And that's amazingly beautiful. Jesus invites the community to participate in the resurrection process. Did you notice that? The power to raise people from the dead comes only from God. We know that. Still, in helping to untie Lazarus' hands and feet, the community gets together to collaborate, to cooperate in the process of pulling its members out of the rags of death. The cry of exultation, both from Jesus and the community, when they see Lazarus back, expresses the call for life. It is coexistence, sedimented by the bond of love that makes the community defend life and therefore resurrect. The new life depends on the solidarity and loving action of the group in the face of illness and affliction and anxiety, and sadness, even death. Because helped by the Spirit of the Father, the community knows that as people are freed from their bones, they open up to a new life. If you are interested in scholarly conversations, you would like to know that the story of Lazarus' resurrection encloses what scholars call the Book of Signs, from chapter 2 through 11 of the Gospel of John. Lazarus' resurrection is the greatest sign made by Jesus, life that overcomes death. At the same time, it is the announcement and the preparation of the great sign, Jesus' own death and resurrection. And according to the Bible, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in Him will live in the practice of brotherhood, justice and love as he is risen. Now, what does this story have to do with Mary Magdalene in the tomb and Easter? Well, like the episode of Lazarus, the account of Jesus' resurrection is initially marked by anguish, pain and suffering. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb 
and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon, Peter, and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Here Mary represents the community of believers as well, in search of the body of Jesus. That is, she is in search of something concrete, physical, palpable, something she can hold on to and support herself, even if it is lifeless. The absence of the body of Jesus causes anguish, pain, and sadness. It is that kind of suffering that distorts and hinders the world of view, the understanding of reality. There is a time when the only thing the community understand is that Jesus' body was stolen, the only truth left for them. Mary here, representing the community, does not understand that the absence of the body indicates the end of death and the beginning of a new life. No. And why? Well, because several reasons might overwhelm and hinder the community's belief in the risen Lord. We all face challenges and fears in life that makes us doubt the resurrection of Jesus and even the powerful action of God's hands, right? But what John is saying here is that it is precisely in times of challenge and fears that we need to place our faith in the risen Lord, in the risen Jesus, the Lord of life. Both the stories of Lazarus and Mary Magdalene were reading to prepare us not for the worst, but for the best. They place hope in the right place place, our hearts, and through that hope we enter the presence of the risen one. As a researcher of ancient history, especially classical literature, I like to read some documents that are not part of the 66 books of the Bible, but are from around the same period. For example, in addition to the canonical Gospels, other ancient texts mention Mary Magdalene. There is even a Gospel uh, whose authorship is attributed to her. I'm not sure if you knew that. And even if we don't need to see these texts inspired by God and therefore worthy of becoming part of the biblical canon, the thing is that it is still possible to see that already in the early centuries of the Church, Mary Magdalene was a significant reference for Christian communities. Uh, bear in mind that here in the Gospel of John, she represents nothing less than the community of believers called to experience and called to announce the resurrection. But still, she was like any one of us, and we are like her. Simple people who live day by day fighting for life, trying to avoid problems to live a life without struggles and hardships, right? People who at any moment might be hit and run over by fear of illness and death. But it is precisely Mary's attitudes before fear that God expects from his sons and daughters. Even finding the tomb empty, the search must continue. Even when we feel hopeless with the death of our dreams, even when it is hard to realize the signs of resurrection around us, even when we are still uh, stuck with the idea of death and the end of everything on which we placed our hopes, even though pain, despair, and fear do not let us realize that life is stronger than death, our goal is still to look for and find the Master. However, we must often change our focus and learn to see with the eyes of faith, as these are the eyes that direct us towards the right place when we face challenges that seem impossible to overcome. While Mary looked for Jesus within the tomb, she had only her tears for a companion. The Lord is not in the tomb. But it's interesting how we think of the eyes when we want to be intimate with God, isn't it? Do you know what awakens Mary from her suffering and anguish? Not a vision she had of Jesus. She saw Jesus and mistook him for the gardener. It was the sound of a powerful yet sweet and soft voice calling her name, Mary. Only then she turned around and exclaimed, Rabboni. 
a loving way of addressing the master whom you appreciate so much. See that only now the physical eyes are at work in this story. Now Mary no longer looks at the tomb. Her gaze is directed at the risen one. It is the beginning of the new creation. Mary partakes in the lovely and comforting experience of being embraced and welcomed as a disciple. Is that because she had super powerful eyes that could see through the thick wall of disease and death? No, no, of course not. It's because she is a ship that hears and recognizes the voice of the Good Shepherd. What is the story of Easter then? Well, it's the story of God's victory over death, which brings liberation, salvation, mercy and grace through the human experience of intimacy, of living together in love. Easter makes people experience life for real. Now, the mission does not end with this story. It begins here. It is necessary to continue the works of Jesus. The kingdom of God is for everyone, for all people, and so it is necessary for Mary to announce it to my brothers. And what does Jesus mean uh, when he says, my brothers? Well, it's simple. The announcement is universal. Everyone is called to love, to experience the reason one alive in the community of faith. There is still something in ascension that you need to know, or remember if you already know it. Jesus' death is not a sign of defeat, but it is the victory of love, truth, and life over the world of death. I have overcome the world. Remember that. Jesus' last gesture on the cross is the surrender of the Spirit, the Spirit of the Father, who accompanied and guided Him through all His kingdom proclamation work. After the resurrection, the same Spirit returns, but now to the community of believers to guide them on the path of truth and life. You must now learn to nurture faith in the presence of Jesus crucified and risen. You need to nurture faith in everything that happens in your life, every day, all the time. The faith community that you participate in, that you attend, is critical because it is the family that God Himself has commissioned to guide and strengthen you. Today we are all called to live together with the love of the risen God and the bliss of those who believe without seeing the risen God with their physical eyes. Because faith in Jesus of Nazareth is Easter. He who remains alive among us, he who participates in our life through the Holy Spirit of God, is the one who leads us to recognize His presence in the signs of love manifested in the different communities and different cultures of our time. Assuming this faith in the God of life moves us to global solidarity for peace and life overcoming the empires of hunger and war and disease and anxiety and death. This is your God, the God who returned from death to give you full life and full peace. Never walk away from Him. Happy Easter. Be safe and be at peace you and your family. Bye now.